Greetings, I hope you're good and well. About three years ago, I read The Conspiracy Against the Human Race. It shocked me to the core. It's a very shocking book and it kind of caught me off guard. Um, and then I read the book again a second time in 2021 and it was no less shocking. I did a review for the book in 2020, you may have seen it, and then in 2021 I did a second review which was much longer. And since then the book has been sitting on my Kindle device, a bit like the Hellraiser box, the dreaded Hellraiser box, that if you open it up these horrible demons will come out. And it's been sitting on my Kindle and I've just been scrolling past it, trying to block it away and pretend it's not there. But um, I've just finished reading it for the third time. I, I decided to read it again. I must be a glutton for punishment. I must be. And I, I read an interview by Lagotti a while back and he described this book as a self-help book, which surprised me. So. This time around, I approached the book as though it was a self-help book to see if it came across any different. It could be said that this book has four main messages. Message number one is that the heightened level of consciousness that human beings have in, when compared to other animals is a bad thing. This hyper-awareness, this braininess, but more specifically the consciousness itself. This heightened level of consciousness that we've got is a curse, not a blessing. That is, that is the, the main message of the book. We're too aware and this awareness allows us to contemplate future pain and our own death. Message number two, human beings are like puppets. Now, it took me a long time to fully grasp this one, but I, I think I've got it now. We are comprised of many different parts. We are not unitary. We're not one solid whole. We are comprised of many parts and many systems. The human body has got many systems and many organs. And it's, you know, you've got the nervous system. We've got our skeleton, we've got, um, we've got all this different wiring, all our, all our different organs, and they're all put together kind of like a machine or a puppet, right? Also, we evolved through natural selection. So us, we're, we weren't created as one solid being. We, we evolved over time, a changing species. Also, we've, we've got no free will in several ways. Um, the best example of this is the fact that we've got a sex drive. A lot of people like to think that they, they want to have sex because they want to have sex, but that's not the case at all. The reason we want to have sex, the reason we've got a sex drive is because our genes, our DNA, wants to get passed on to the next generation. So our genes are kind of pulling the strings and we're, we're serving our genes. That's, that's where our sex drive comes from, right? So it is a bit like a puppet thing. Also, we don't choose our thoughts. When we think about things, we don't, we don't choose what we're gonna think about. Our thoughts tend to pop into our heads. And, you know, as I'm talking now, I'm not really consciously choosing my words, they're kind of popping into my head. So message number two is we're puppets. Message number three of the book is, to put it bluntly, it would be morally and ethically co correct to kind of initiate a mass extinction of the species. It would be ethical, the right thing to do for for everyone to just stop reproducing and let the human race slowly fizzle out over the generations. Um, <clears throat> which, which will never happen, by the way. It, it, it would never happen in a million years. Um, for a start, it'd be hard enough getting a group of people to all agree to that, but 
for, for it to happen, you'd have to get all of the countries across the world, all of the governments across the world to, to kind of sign up for it. And then they'd have to get all of their citizens to agree to it. It is just a complete wild fantasy. It's never going to happen. But, but that's the other message. Um, <clears throat> how many is that actually? One. So too much consciousness, puppets. Um, oh yeah, the, the other one. The other one is in order to be happy, you have to be deluded. If you're a human being with this heightened consciousness, and you want to be happy and content, you have to be, you have to either push the ugly truth aside and bury it in your mind and distract yourself, or you have to be deluded and choose to believe in some religion or afterlife. That, that's message number four, all right? So in order to be happy, you have to be deluded. Thank you for making it to the halfway point of this video. This is a quick message to let you know that I have a range of horror and science fiction books available and most of them are completely free. If you enjoy my work, you can support me without spending any money at all by simply leaving a review for one of my free books on Amazon, Goodreads or any of the retailers websites. You'll be helping me to grow as an author and a book reviewer. The links for my books are below and your help is much appreciated. Now, back to the video. The tone of this book is very impressive. Thomas Ligotti has got quite a vocabulary and the book contains some of the most genius phrasing I've ever read. For example, um, a, big, a big phrase throughout the book which is capitalised is malignantly useless. He describes the human race as malignantly useless and it's just such a good way of summing up this um, lack of meaning that we have. Um, you, you, you know, most everything we do is just for like, just for our personal enjoyment and the, the species as a whole malignantly useless. I love that phrasing. Also consciousness, the parent of all horrors. And the other one, one of my favourites, is um, he describes consciousness and the evolution of consciousness as nature's biggest blunder. That has always stuck with me, right from the first reading back in 2020. To describe consciousness as a blunder is, is just genius wording, in my opinion. Uh, the, the tone of the book is anti-nature and sometimes anti-environmentalist and anti-universe. There's a certain chapter of the book where he kind of makes it clear that, you know, don't worry about global warming, don't worry about pollution. If we all go extinct, so be it. And also if planet Earth gets polluted and just rots from within, Good, because you know Mother Nature created us, and in his opinion, that was a big blunder and a, like a cruel mistake. Anyway, so there's a certain chapter in the book where he, he, he kind of it seems to me like he he would be happy for the Earth to crumble apart, and he sometimes describes the universe as like this dusty. We're in the dusty corner of the universe, so it's it's like. There's a tone of anti-nature, anti anti-earth, and anti-universe, anti-cosmos, you could say. So, as I say, I approached the book the third time around as a self-help book. So did it work as a self-help book? Um, what it does, what one thing it does do as a self-help book is it lets you know that you're not alone. If you're a pessimist and you have these kind of dark thoughts, it can often seem as though you're the only one in the world who, who thinks like that. And so this book kind of gives you a sense of company. It lets you know that there are other people out there who think the same way. So it, in that sense, it's a self-help book and it works. But what it doesn't do as a self-help book is 
is tell you how to move on after reading the bloody thing because after you read this book you do actually feel as though you've been hit by a train and you're just left there lying on the tracks beaten and blooded so it doesn't really give you life advice as such it doesn't tell you how to move on so it, as a self-help book it, it, in one way it works in one way it doesn't a criticism of mine as well of the book is that it's got a bit of a fascistic tone in a way when you read it you kind of get the feeling that you're not allowed to disagree with the ideas in the book. You kind of get the feeling that you have to agree with Ligotti. He kind of puts this philosophy down, he puts his ideas across in such a kind of forceful manner. You're kind of sitting there thinking, oh, oh okay, I'm not even going to try to disagree with you because that, that's not an option. He actually attacks um, optimists in the book. He, he, there are several times where he, he kind of warns you that there are certain stories out there, fiction stories, that seem pessimistic, but they have a happy ending. And he kind of, like, it's like a warning, like as, as though these people are, uh, should be avoided. I don't really like that, that tone of the book. It's a, it's a bit one-sided, you know, it's, it's like you have to agree with him. Um, one, one other thing it doesn't really mention either is, is, I mean, this is kind of my opinion, but if you find yourself having been born, if you find yourself existing as a human being, you might as well at least try to be happy. I mean, it, it's kind of silly not to. If you're alive anyway, and, well, I mean, you could always commit suicide, which is your right, in my opinion. But if, if you don't want to do that, and if, if you haven't got the courage to do it, you might as well try to be happy. So that, that's a bit of a, that's a criticism of mine, of the book. But I, I am a fan of the book. I am a fan, and um, I've read it three times now, and it's still... It's probably the most powerful book I've ever read, really. It, it, it is really, really strong stuff. And, you know, it's, it lurks in your mind. It really does. And you can't shake the ideas. And that, that's a sign of a good book. So, um, <laughs> if, you, if you haven't read it, and you're thinking about reading it, well, you know, look, there's just no, there's no turning back. Once, once you read this book, you can't, you can't shake it off. So I'll, the choice is yours. I'll let you decide. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back in two weeks with another book review. In the meantime, try to have a good day on this paradoxical, uncanny, malignantly useless piece of rock we call Earth. And remember, being alive is all right. Goodbye.